Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I am going to be talking all about top coats and helping you choose the right sealer for your painted piece of furniture. There's natural waxes, there's uh, hemp oil, there's clear coats. So I'm gonna be going through all the ones that Dixie Belle offers, telling you the benefits of them, demoing them, and hopefully helping you choose which one's gonna work best for you. And I'm also going to be swatching and showing you all the beautiful colors in a new fall release that they did. These are limited time offerings. So you need to get your hands on these. These are launching on September 22nd. So I'm going to show you all the beautiful colors that they have. Walk through the top coats. We're going to have lots of great information in this video. So if you want to learn all about top coats and these new fall colors, just keep watching. Okay, so before we can talk about top coats, we need to get some paint down so we can test these out. I have grabbed the back of a board of an old piece of furniture that I took off. I like to demo on pieces like this because this is an existing you know, finish. This is similar to what you're gonna be painting on as opposed to just using a raw board. So I'm gonna start by cleaning this off. I have some of my white lightning in my sprayer. I'm just gonna spray that on. And give it a good scrub so my paint's gonna stick really well. And now I'm taking a towel with just some water and I'm gonna wipe back that residue. Now I'm just drying it off so that I can add some paint. So before I can talk about top coats, I have to demo some paint so that we have something to put the top coat on. And I have the perfect paints to do that today because Dixie Belle just released this exclusive fall colors. These are just for a limited time only. So when they're gone, they're gone. Um, they're beautiful colors. They'd be great for you know your fall crafting that you're getting ready to do. And I'm so excited about fall because I'm just over summer. That always happens here in Tennessee. So I'm excited to be playing with some beautiful fall colors today. Okay, I'm gonna get some of these top coats out of the way. So this first color I'm using is cashmere. And this reminds me of like a beautiful chunky cable knit sweater. It's like a warm kind of ivory color, very pretty. Okay, and next up is latte. It's a beautiful beige that, you know, looks like the color of a latte. Next up is Merlot. This is a really beautiful like burnt orange, almost like it's like sometimes it looks red, sometimes it looks orange, but that very beautiful deep fall color that you see in leaves. Oh my gosh, it just started, it just started like pouring again here. It has been raining for like 40 days and 40 nights in Tennessee, it feels like. Oh my gosh, you guys, this color is so pretty. Oh, I've never painted a color like this before. Okay, this might be my vote, what I want to do a whole piece in. I am going to do a whole piece in one of these colors, I promise. I just don't know when. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely like more orange. We'll see when it dries down. Um, but these would be so pretty. Like if you got some pumpkins from Michaels or something and just paint them all in this color scheme, these colors work so beautifully together. Um, these would be great for crafting. I'm obsessed. That one is so pretty. Okay, that's Merlot. Swatching is like harder than you think. I'm like trying not to get paint on myself. <laughs> All right, next up is Pumpkin Spice. This is a really beautiful, warm, deep yellow, almost could pull orange. Let's see what it looks like swatched. Oh, that's really pretty. This one was like my favorite in like seeing it in the cans and now watching it go on. This is really pretty. It is like almost the color of pumpkin pie filling. I think it's a little, a little lighter though. Like not as orange, like more yellow for sure. This is really pretty though. The coverage on all these is looking really good. I'm probably will have to add a second coat before we test out top coats on this pumpkin spice. Just yellow, you need a lot more coats. So you either want to prime gray underneath there or white. And um, cause just yellow for some reason with the pigments, you have to do a lot of coats of yellow. That is, that color is gorgeous. I love that. Okay. I don't know which one's my favorite, pumpkin spice or Merlot. We'll have to keep going. Did I Merlot? Isn't it Merlot? Why? 
Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, these are limited release, limited fall colors. So when they're gone, they're gone. So definitely make sure you grab them as soon as you can so you don't miss out. Okay, last one is Juniper, beautiful green. It pretty much matches the fall sweatshirt I have on today because as in Tennessee, I'm willing it to be fall today. Right, this color is definitely giving me the vibes of the pumpkins that you see everywhere. You know, like the white and the light orange and these green pumpkins that are so trendy that cost like $20, $30 a piece. This is that exact color. Wow, that's really pretty too. Nailed it. Nailed it, Dixie Belle. <laughs> Girl, that is pretty. There's something about these, like they're very beautiful, rich fall colors, but they're almost muted a little bit, if that makes sense. It's almost like they turn down the warmth just a tad bit on them and they're just like so untrend. All right, I'm gonna let these dry and then we'll take a look at what they look like and talk about top coats. Oh my goodness, this is why I love swatching colors. You really need to see them out of the can, dried on a piece of wood to see what they're really gonna look like. This Merlot deepens up, it's so beautiful. You know how I said, oh, it's almost orange. Well, when it's wet, it's orange, but then it dries down to this beautiful red with those like burnt orange undertones. And the yellow like really deepens up as well, the pumpkin spice. It's like, it teeters between an orange and a yellow. Now it's time to talk about top coats. I know top coats can be very confusing. I get lots of questions about them and I have tried all of these. So I'm just gonna give you my opinion of which ones I like and why I like them. And let's just start with the first one, the clear coats. This is one of my favorites for beginners. I think it's the easiest to learn. It's gonna give you great protection. These are all water-based polycrylics, so they're gonna give you a crystal clear finish. They're not gonna yellow. They're gonna work well with the paint because the paint is water-based. These are water-based, so you're not gonna have to wait a long time for this to dry to put these top coats on. You guys know flat is my favorite. I use that a lot. Um, I've used satin a couple of times. I think satin is the most forgiving for a beginner, and I've actually never tried gloss, so I'm gonna put that on as well. I'm just gonna put all these on with a dry brush. I have a couple of these sitting around. I like to use the mini or the angled mini to put these clear coats on. The first one I'm gonna do is flat. Flat is my favorite. You'll see it the most on this channel. I just love a really matte finish. I love using this on raw wood um, that I've stained that I've done a chalk wash on because it just looks so natural. It makes it look like raw wood and that's the aesthetic I like, but I love that they have different options for different people. So when you're working with these clear coats, clear coats, you just wanna mix them up really well because um, all the stuff can kind of settle at the bottom and to make them work the best and protect your piece the best, they need to be stirred really well. I'm gonna use my synthetic angled mini to apply this. So I just get a little bit on here. Not too much, and I'm just gonna put it on in this direction. This is These are all self-leveling, which is really great. This is gonna dry down to a flat finish, no yellowing, um, and you can build up up to three coats of this for the protection that you want. Next up, I'm gonna grab satin and just give that a stir. So satin is thicker than the flat. It's almost like, kind of like a pudding consistency. Um, don't let that throw you off. Uh, it's gonna give you a little bit more sheen than the flat. Um, and I think it's the easiest to work with for a beginner. So if you've never top coated anything before, I think satin's the most forgiving. So I just gra grabbed a clean brush. It's okay if it's a little damp, you just don't want your brush like soaked. I'm gonna get a little bit of that satin on my brush. And what am I gonna do? Let's do it on, I need to write down what I'm doing so I remember what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the latte. So this one goes on a lot more white than the flat. Like I said, it's a lot thicker. And I'm just gonna do a couple strokes and leave it alone. You don't wanna overwork these top coats. Just get it on, let it level out, let it do its thing. You can always sand it a little bit once it dries before you put that second coat on. Gloss is the runniest of all of the clear coats. Um, it's pretty, looks pretty consistent with what Gator Hide is, which I've worked with a lot. Um, so I'm just getting this mixed up and then I'm going to put this on the Merlot. And I grabbed a clean dry brush for this one. Oh, that's like, that's, it is very runny. So I'm trying to spread this out. 
Definitely don't want to <laughs> overwork this one and get a lot on there. Okay, so there we go with gloss. Okay, the next one I'm gonna jump to is Gator Hide because it's very similar to these clear coats. These do offer a lot of protection. You can do multiple coats, let it dry an hour to put your other coats on. I typically do two to three coats of these clear coats and they'll cure in 30 days and they are water resistant. But if you're looking for something that's super, super protective, Gator Hide is gonna be the one that you wanna go with. This is gonna offer the most protection and the most water resistance. And I'm gonna apply it with the Dixie Belle Blue Sponge. I like to mist this with my mister and then I'm gonna put this on a plate so it's easy to get onto the applicator. So I put foil on top of here so this doesn't soak into my plate. If you have a plastic plate or you know a paint tray, those will work really well too. So I'm just gonna do the tiniest bit because I don't wanna waste this. So I really like applying Gator Hide with my sprayer. It goes on beautifully and levels out. I think my second option that I like to apply it is this blue Dixie Belle sponge. And you can also apply it with the brushes. I have done that as well, but that would be my order of preference is to spray, sponge, and then synthetic brush. To my sponge with my mister, you just, you don't want it soaking, you just want it a little damp. So I squeeze it in there get a little bit of product on your sponge. You can wipe off any excess on the side. So that's what my sponge looks like. And then I'm just gonna drag it to apply it. So simple. No brush strokes with a sponge because it doesn't have any bristles. I'm gonna go wash this stuff and then we'll move into the waxes. <laughs> okay, next up, let's talk about waxes. So Dixie Belle has two wax options. They have the Easy Peasy Spray Wax, and then they have the Solid Wax, the Best Dang Wax, and this is clear. It looks white, but it's clear. So the reason I like to use waxes is because you are not gonna have any streaks because this just absorbs right into the paint. It's a very cohesive, it's that matte finish, which I love, but it can be a little tricky getting it on evenly. You have to buff it back. Um, so it takes a little bit more elbow grease and not everybody likes a wax finish. You do have to add wax probably down the road one or two years from now. So some people just like to clear coat, move on, know that it's sealed and done. But I really love wax. It's a beautiful finish. If you haven't tried it out, you totally should. Um, it also is not gonna haze your piece at all. Sometimes when you're working with a clear coat, if you have darker colors, you can get this weird haze. You can get little fibers stuck in it. And with wax, you can kind of pick and buff those out, which I like as well. Wax you can apply with a brush or a lint-free cloth. Um, I'm gonna use the Dixie Belle La Petite brush to put on my Besting Wax down on my Juniper color. Dixie Belle's wax is water-based, which is unique. Um, it has no odor to it, which is really nice. Um, I recently used this on my 24 hour flip challenge with a furniture flipping teacher, and I forgot how much I love wax. It's really pretty. So you can just put this on with a brush. When you're doing wax, you really like buff it in and rub it in. You want it to absorb into the paint. And the, another great thing about working with wax, if you wanna add some dimension with some color waxes, the waxes layer really well up on each other. And if you wanna distress your piece, you can still distress your piece after you wax and it's gonna look really pretty. And I'm gonna let this set for a little bit and then I will wipe it back in a few minutes. I would give this wax 30 days to cure as well to its completely hard finish. I'm gonna take my tape off so that we can do <laughs> some more top coats on the other side of this paint. All right, up next, I am going to demo the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. It, it lives up to its name. It is a liquid form, really unique to Dixie Belle. Nobody else has a product like this that I can think of off the top of my head. So I'm just gonna spray it on and then you wipe it in evenly and it will dry in 30 minutes and I can add a second coat after that. So I'm gonna just like cover this up a little bit. <laughs> Shake it really well and then you spray it on. Just wipe it in. This is really quick and easy. The pieces I've done this on, it's definitely not as durable as some of the other options that you have here, but it gets the job done and it's really easy to use. 
Okay, next up, I'm gonna move on to my natural sealers. So I'm gonna start with the Howdy Do Hemp Seed Oil. Um, hemp seed oil is natural, it's actually food safe, so you could use this to bring out the natural beauty of raw wood. You could use it to seal like a cutting board or a bowl, anything like that. It is gonna be food safe. So I have a dry lint-free cloth here, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on here. A little bit goes a long way with hemp oil. And I'm just gonna rub it on the bottom here. All worked in there. So this dries in two hours and I could come back in and do additional coats. And then you're supposed to let it set overnight like 12 hours and then you can come back and wipe back the excess of that if there is any leftover. So the last option I have is a Big Mama's Butter and this is a natural sealer too. It actually has some of that hemp seed oil in there. Um, it also has carnauba oil, beeswax. So all natural waxes in here. And some of these are scented. You guys know that Orange Grove is my favorite but something cool that they have with this fall release of all these colors is they came out with a limited edition scent and this is called flannel and this is like cedar leather like a man in the woods chopping some wood i mean it's very it's a musky it kind of smells like a cologne but i really love it I can put this on two ways. I could use a wax brush. This is my best dang wax brush. This is what I usually use to apply my Orange Grove one. Um, or I could do a cloth. So I'm going to do one option with the brush and I'll do one with the cloth. So I'm just going to get just a little bit on my brush. Like with this, a little bit goes a long way. So I'm going to dab off my excess here. And then I'm going to go on my Merlot color. Oh my goodness, that smells really good, you guys. The flannel, woo! It smells like we're chopping wood in the forest. Put on your flannel shirt and your Uggs. Like the Besting Wax, this sets for about 15, 20 minutes, kind of let it absorb, and then you can come back with a lint-free cloth and wipe it back. This is not as protective as Besting Wax, but it will cure faster. This cures in seven days, so that's the fastest curing product they have. The hemp oil is 21 days, and pretty much all the top coats, I would wait 30 days for them to be cured. I know I keep using the word cured, and you might not know what cure time means, so dry time is different than cure time. Dry time is gonna be the time that this top coat is dry to the touch and then you can recoat it or you can move it around very gently and lightly but cure time is when it's gonna get down to its hardest state it's gonna be completely solid it's gonna be protective at that point you can use some mild soaps or cleaners on it you can move it around you can bang it around don't don't bang too much because you will chip your finish but it, you can be a little bit more aggressive with it once it's completely cured Okay, so I'm also gonna apply some of this big mama's butter in the flannel with a lint-free cloth, if you don't feel like using a brush. Super easy. Okay, my last step, I let my best dang wax and my big mama's butter dry. The hemp oil should really sit overnight, but we don't have time for that. So we're just gonna wipe them all back and take a look at all the finishes. Something that's unique to the waxes is you can actually buff them up after they're dry to give them a little bit more sheen. So you can kind of play with the finish if you're not happy with it. I usually don't buff mine that much because again, I really like flat finishes, but you can buff them up and down depending on how you want it to look. So the things that are surprising me is how much I love the satin finish. I, I really like the flat, don't get me wrong, I use flat all the time, but the satin just has like a little bit of sheen that just sets it apart like it it's really pretty i am starting to be a big fan of these natural sealers like the hemp oil and big mama's butter looks gorgeous i love the scents in big mama's butter 
I hope this helped showing you all the top coats um, in action. They're all really great, you guys. You can't choose a bad one. So just find out which one works best for you, which has the properties that you're looking for and the finish you're looking for. You will not be disappointed. And oh my gosh, you guys, these colors are amazing. Let me know what is your favorite down in the comment box below. Okay, I never know how to end videos like this. I just wanna say thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I will see you next time. Thank you.